This week on What's This Weapon, what do you get if you take this away from this? You get this. This is the Barrett M240 LW. Now, the gun on the table just now was not, as the eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed, an M240 at all. It was a British uh, L7. Well, actually, it was a cutaway, which has its own number. But anyway, um, so that's the British version of the Belgian FN MAG, M-A-G, 58, introduced in 1958, came into British service, came into American service, as the M240 and a range of different models, the M240B or Bravo is the standard infantry machine gun of the US Armed Forces. And this comes in with a drive in 2000 for a lightweight M240. It was originally the M240E6 program, and then it came, they came up with a slightly more convoluted name for the, for the program. But looking at how to make that very heavy gun a lot lighter. Um, very solid, very reliable, accurate. One of, the, one of the benchmark general purpose machine guns of the era. They didn't want to get rid of it, but they wanted to put out a what's called a solicitation to, to find companies that could provide them with a lighter version of this thing. And then M240E6 became the M240 weight reduction program. And there was... Uh, a contract led to FN, appropriately enough, I suppose, they were the creators of the original gun, in 2001 to look at a welded titanium receiver. Uh, logical enough, you want to replace your big solid steel receiver with something that's as strong but a lot lighter, titanium. So that's what FN are looking at, and they're looking at welding. Now, at the same sort of time, Barrett are, well... According to an interview with um, the head of the company, with a friend of ours, Miles Vining, um, if I understand correctly, Barrett did not enter this solicitation, this competition for a new M240, because it was they believed it had been written for FN to win, and so they didn't enter. Um, in, in any event, FN definitely did win it with the M240L, which is not to be confused with this, the LW. Just to make it super clear before we get into any more detail, the FN, although they dropped the welded idea, they did stick with the titanium. So the FN M240L is a titanium receiver M240. The Barrett M240LW is a welded together steel receiver. Now the goal weight of this program that FN had already won, um, and that the Barrett were going to still push out and, and beat the FN design. That was, their, that was their plan. The goal of the program had been to reduce the 240 by four pounds minimum and up to seven pounds if at all possible. Seven pounds is um, a heck of a lot of weight to try to remove. Um, but as our opening spoiler has already shown, these guys almost managed that. Um, they managed to reduce the, the weight of the 240 by six and a half pounds, hence the AR-15 there. Now, it's a very early AR-15 that weighs a little bit over um, six and a half pounds with, a with an empty magazine, but actually weighs less than six and a half pounds without the magazine. Super light. But nonetheless, they managed to remove a whole rifle's weight from this classic um, machine gun design, which is incredibly impressive. Right, so just to be clear, that's from 27.6 pounds down to 21.15 pounds. Um, pretty, pretty amazing work. So if we look at the gun, we can see where some of that has come from. Um, we've got fluting on the barrel there. Quite deep fluting on the barrel. That's a, a good start. Keeps the barrel nice and heavy, but reduces weight, relatively speaking. Uh, and the barrel is shorter as well. You can have a, with modern metallurgy and, and manufacturing, you can produce a shorter, stiffer barrel that is just as accurate, but is lighter and more compact as well. This whole machine gun is more compact as a result of this barrel already. The heart of this very clever approach was the two-part receiver. And if I flip this over, you can see the seam, the welding seam where my finger there is, and then 
a bit more ground down where this finger is. And there's a patent for this, which we can show you, which appears in 2011, which is when the first prototype of this appears online and in a firing video with different furniture, but it's recognizably the same receiver. And so that was sort of the announcement of the uh, Barrett LW. Uh, so that's a decade on from the original solicitation. Barrett's been working away in the background to create uh, a 240L beta, essentially. So not necessarily going to replace FN's offering in the US forces because they're already committed by then. But um, this is a very popular design worldwide, the base design in the mag. All sorts of customers might want something that's even better than the FN. So these, you can see, I think, as well, from the design of the receiver, there's a lot of machining here with these reinforcing ribs left in place. But they have, it's a bit like a Mauser, a broom handle Mauser C96, where the not very deep milling, but they have cut away a few ounces of metal here, there, here and there. And it just helps with, with the weight, but they've left in these reinforcing shapes as well. Also gives it quite a distinctive look. If we spin it around, we have our markings. So the Barrett logo, M240LW, a very low serial number, which is very nice to have. And then the company details of Barrett there. That's about it for the markings. There is a Barrett logo up front on the, which I failed to show you, on the gas block here. And 7.62 millimeter. We've also got on the front of the carrying handle, Barrett patent pending. Um, I'm not actually sure whether that's applying to the adjustable carrying handle here or to the whole design. I suspect it's the whole design because it's not patent pending on anything else, but I could be wrong on that. And it's a, it's essentially worked, it essentially works the same way as the um, FN mag, the GPMG, which, depending which country you're from, in that it has a carrying position and a stowed position and it's part of your barrel removal mechanism, but it has a second catch here you've just seen me press and it sort of flops down. But the idea of that is to press and you can pivot it uh, forward like that. So a little bit more going on with the carrying handle. Uh, there is a split ring quick release pin here for removing the top cover, which is different as well. The buttstock is a significant departure. Let's just pop that off. So uh, trigger group retained by the, the one pin, automatic only, extremely simple. Um, it's, it's a 240 trigger group with a cross bolt safety. Um, not much to say there, but the buttstock assembly is quite different. We have a catch underneath. I'll show you the catch there on the overhead. Press that and as you can see that releases the buttstock upwards. And then it's a slight hook out to clear this bit, which is your buffer. So it's quite a quite a hefty buffer here. Totally different design to the 240 or the, or the mag or the L7 or whatever. And then we have a press button here, push button here. And I should have done this with it on the gun, really, but <laughs> just it's easier to demonstrate off, I suppose. Multi-position adjustable buttstock. So that takes it out to roughly the traditional FN mag length, but it compacts right down depending on body armor, body shapes, what, what role you're using it in potentially, all the way back down to that. Sling loops on both sides, quite an impressive bit of engineering in its own right with the buttstock. Everything on the interior is basically the same. Um, not much point going into detail on that. And well, one major improvement, they weren't just looking to make this thing lighter, they were trying to improve it where they could. We've got integral uh, Picatinny rail on the top cover there. Uh, folding sights, I mean, that's not sort of 
revolutionary or anything, but you know, that's their design. We do have, though, a totally different handguard system. Um, so this is a key mod, uh, as, as was the style at the time. Um, these days, it would be, probably be an M-lock rather than key mod, but uh, nonetheless. Still a big improvement, I think, over the 240 Bravo in particular. The traditional handguard on the FN Mag is in contact with the gas tube, so it's going to get quite hot quite quickly, and that's why, um, especially the American 240 handguard, is very bulky. It also has that top cover section as well, which is a great way to tell apart the 240 from other foreign variants like our own L7. Here, it's just a single handguard, uh, screwed on, but it's spaced, it's gapped from the gas tube, so it's nice and cool, despite being made entirely of metal. It should remain pretty cool because of that air gap and air circulation around it. Uh, the fluting on the barrel will also help with radiating away heat. It's not just about weight. They also, integrated into that, came up with a new bipod system. So the bipod on the 240, it's its own design, somewhat distinctive. Um, not everyone's favorite design, it's, it's pretty solid. Attaches to the barrel. Always better if you can take but well, taking as much pressure off the barrel as possible, not just for heat, but for accuracy reasons. And in this case, it also meant by abstracting the bipod from the barrel, they could make it super quick release. So it's just a steel peg with a notch and then two lift up tabs. So you don't even need to operate those tabs to reinstall it. You just drop it on, which is really impressive and quite satisfying as well. The bipod itself is a take on the M60 design. So pretty standard pull and fold and press to extend uh, the legs. Don't need to go into that really. Um, otherwise, this is pretty standard. The whole, the whole point was, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, which in this case means quite substantial changes nonetheless to, to reduce it by all that weight. Um, but to keep you know, the manual of arms, the drills the same, um, just offer a few sort of quality of life improvements alongside that massive uh, reduction in weight. Uh, the only other thing about our example really, apart from being quite early, is, and you can see this if we pop open the top cover as well, while we're at it. Absolutely standard uh, FN mag disassembly. You'll see some minor differences and differences in finish and things like that, but it's, you know, it's, it's absolutely a, an FN mag bolt and bolt carrier. Um, reason I've actually popped this out is not to show you it per, per se, but it is covered in little proof marks. BNP with a crown. That's British Nitro proof. So this is thoroughly British proved, which is legally required if you're going to sell a firearm in the United Kingdom. Uh, so we received this along with some other very interesting modern guns from a, a, a UK dealer. And I have no inside information on this at all, but given the choice of guns, um, I, I speculate that perhaps somebody was interested in this new development from the United States as to maybe uh, being of use to British units. But I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to invoke the um, the obvious comparison because I genuinely don't know. Dealers in the UK are sometimes looking to sell to whoever around the world it needn't be um, for the domestic UK. But of course, with the long tradition that uh, Britain has with the GPMG, the L7, the FN Mag, it would make a lot of sense as we look at prolonging the life of these things and perhaps just buying more if we don't find anything better, I can well believe that a few years ago, um, people were looking at this within MOD. Um, if anyone does know more about that, I haven't put out any feelers for this video, so um, <laughs> please do let me know if you know more without getting yourself in trouble. Really cool modern bit of technology. Um, just goes to show, you know, what, one week we might be showing you some uh, something flintlock and the next week, something from just a few years ago that is an improvement on one of the top three machine guns in the world right now, I would suggest.
Now, um, the M240L, having won that US Army contract, uh, the US Marines did not adopt the M240L, I believe. They, they've gone their own route. And we have, or they have in America, the NSGW machine gun, in theory, coming in imminently as well. So I don't know about the long-term future of the FN 240L, but I do know that they're still procuring them as we speak based on previous purchases. It takes a while for them to filter through. And I think the plan was to have enough to equip all their frontline infantry combat teams. I could be wrong on that. Let me, let me know if I am. Um, so it would serve alongside the 240 Bravo till such time as they're all replaced by some ray gun. No, not really. Uh, by some future... Uh, machine gun, which on paper will be um, the XM250, the new NSGW belt-fed machine gun. Uh, 